I box it there and then we'll have to get Hey guys, so I, <laughs> hello black screen, um, I'm just here to pop in just to leave you guys with a, or to kind of update you guys, I did try to film this and I didn't, ac I accidentally didn't save the audio, um, so it's, you can only really hear it on my phone unfortunately, so this is sort of my fake podcast, I, I do mention that in the video, but I did just want to say like, perhaps this could lead to a proper podcast, who who really knows a year ago there was something that i really wanted just because just in general like throughout my life i have so many interests and one of them is humans and um i normally have a lot of questions but i do hope that you guys enjoy this this content and i hope that perhaps you could press play and relax and maybe even clean while you hear this or even i don't know hear it while you're on a drive perhaps anyway Hope this brought, brings you some sort of insight, or I hope this is entertaining at least, and I will see you next time. Oops, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, you guys. This is, I'm trying to do like a fake podcast kind of thing. I've tried to do a podcast before, um, but I'm taking, I'm trying it one more time. And technically, this is not my idea at all. I saw it um, from one of the YouTubers that I'll link down below. Um, but basically she did like a similar thing where she discussed, it was anxiety, um, but I feel like, and that was actually super interesting, it was like, um, she was talking to like a therapist, like her friend therapist, and did they discussed like, uh, being a men millennial and like in your 20s and anxiety, which is so interesting. I feel like that topic is pretty vague though, like you can talk about like a lot of different things. So anyway, all to conclude, this is Melanie. This is my cousin. She has her own YouTube channel. Um, and I'm really excited about this kind of video. Um, I hope everything goes well since this is like take one. But anyway, I do have a bunch of questions that I'm actually gonna ask her, but I do wanna start off with um, actually, um, just in general, like, I remember, and I haven't told Melanie since, like some of this stuff, but like I would go out, um, like as in, like I go to coffee shops or whatever, or, like kind of like a conversation starter. Like sometimes I'll be talking to people, and, and then I would be like, "Oh my god, yeah!" Like my cousin is right now in Japan. She's like two <laughs> months in Japan, and it's so cool. And just like I feel like that's like, a good conversation starter because like, people are like, "What in Japan? What did she do?" Um, <laughs> but anyway, so that's kind of to kick off me, kind of wanting to introduce um, the fact that you've been traveling and just like, we were talking about it before, um, before we started recording, but just in general, I know that a lot of people kind of say like traveling, when they travel um, mm -hmm. and they come back home, they kind of feel gratitude for wherever they live. Like they're like, oh, you know, like I really do love Texas or I really love where I was, um, you know, from or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that way? Definitely, yes. Really? Yes. So like this might seem like not that big of a deal, but it mm -hmm. was at the time. The produce the, that specifically mm -hmm. I love was so expensive in Japan. Mm -hmm. Watermelons I took for That's granted, true, like, mangoes, the avocados. Weather, so. That's true. Well, everything that they have is imported. So like the watermelons, the mangoes, those are all imported. So that's why it costs more to get those specific, you know? So I, I definitely miss those things. But like, aside from, you know, cost, I miss my family, oh, I miss true. my friends, mm -hmm. you know? So you did have, like, you weren't like by yourself, right? So kind of like mm -hmm. explain like briefly, like why you went and mm -hmm. were you with yourself? Like, or you were with friends? Jeff and I went. And um, we met one of my friends um, who I went to high school with. He's a really close personal friend of mine. Um, he's in the military. And so we went out to go see him mm -hmm. and meet up with some of his military friends. Um, so I was actually with a group of people. I made a lot of really new friends over there. Um, they were all really kind. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it's all like a new experience, mm -hmm. you know, other than Joe and Jeff, I didn't really know those people from before. Mm -hmm. So um, you were like meeting them. Would you say that you're good at meeting like new people? Yeah, I love making friends. I love making new friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's like 
something that, that I'm kind of good at. Yeah, I definitely. <laughs> yeah, so like Melanie's really good at. Okay, I don't know if this means anything to anyone, but <laughs> Melanie's like a Capricorn, but she's like a really friendly Capricorn. And she's, <laughs> Uh, Melanie is really good at making friends. She's always had like a lot of friends, um, mm -hmm. but also it's like it's not like one specific kind. It's like you make friends like everywhere, with pretty much anyone. But yeah, with anyone. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely wasn't like that first like school wise for you. No. Um, well, when I went to high school, I went to a high school that I felt was kind of vicious. Mm -hmm. I don't know if probably other people have that same sort of mentality that like all high schools vicious and I have trouble making friends there mm -hmm. um you know obviously that's not it that's it's not like oh you don't make friends in high school then you're just not good at making friends I couldn't make friends in high school and I'm really good at making friends now you know um I feel like it's very vicious in that setting you know what mm -hmm. I mean and me in particular like I went to a very small school everyone pretty much knew everything about everyone and I think that that it could be nice that like, oh, you know, I recognize everyone and everyone gets to kind of know me, but it gets kind of like, you know, gossip goes too far sometimes. Mm -hmm. And like, um, sometimes people, I think, get really competitive. Mm -hmm. And when it's that small of a group, I feel like sometimes it makes people feel kind of um, like they have to, I, I wouldn't really say lash out, but like, they kind of act out more, you know? Like rebel, like you. Um, Do you feel like you did that? Do like you? I rebel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess. But um, I guess like for other people, they, they kind of feel like um, since all of their stuff is out in the open and it's a smaller group of people, mm -hmm. like they have to do something to stand out more, you know what oh, I mean? Like the people that were already in, is what you're talking about? Like mm -hmm. kind of like, because we used to go to... Um, well, uh, our grandma's like really religious, so mm -hmm. we used to go to, um, it's called TCE, right? And mm -hmm. I definitely, like, okay, so my high school experience was not like that at all. <laughs> like, and you know, that's great or whatever. Yeah. Um, like, I didn't make, like, lifetime friends, but I didn't have, like, a bad experience. But um, mm -hmm. I did feel like in TCE, like, everybody, like, it was, like, the same kind of people, too. It's like they were all kind of puppy or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like there was no one that I knew that was my age because no one from my school went. But um, oh again, yeah, everyone like knew each other and it was really clicky. It was kind of hard to get in, but also I was like pretty shy then. I think that that was the word that I was missing. It was very clicky, you know. Everyone yeah. kind of like, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so I I, I kind of feel like when you have those sort of clicks, yeah, you kind of have to like, you kind of feel like a a uh, obligated to like kind of stay in and like be with them and like mm. do their things you yeah know? i get that because you're trying to like also you're really young you mm -hmm. know you don't really know what to do so you look around to see what everyone else is doing that's what they're doing you know what mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. um which is like kind of sad honestly yeah but um yeah i do remember like everyone in that clique like they were like um even though like there's like they were more like religious than i was like what does that mean like does that really mean that you're going to be good because like they not good in the sense that like you're a bad human for like partying but they mm -hmm. were more easily influenced to things that like god wouldn't be okay with no, <laughs> no. <laughs> which i mean like is fine uh -huh. but it's just like it's funny yeah you know? it is it is interesting you know yeah exactly mm -hmm. um so i actually took a picture of like the questions with melanie's phone and i have like basically like a bunch of different questions that I'm going to ask Melanie, and this is so funny because it was supposed to be like 20 minutes long, and then we're eight minutes in. Anyway, so we're <laughs> going to go ahead and start talking about the first one that I wanted to ask you. So if I look at my phone a lot, like that's what I'm looking at, okay? Um, so there was one that I really wanted to ask you. Um, hold on. I might cut this. <laughs> okay, so uh -huh. what is my body language telling you um, right now? Well... <laughs> so this is actually based on a game that I really mm -hmm. like some of these questions uh -huh. and this could be just like a rapid thing you don't have to like really linger on this but just mm -hmm. like based off of what you know about body language like what do you you look like you're presenting okay yeah. cool. so like you know you have your your shoulders uh -huh. back like that I'm, I'm slouching I'm probably yeah like, I'm <laughs> <so> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm probably getting a little too comfortable. But um, yeah, you look like you're presenting. You look very professional. <laughs> what about, um, do you ever like go out? Okay, like whenever you're trying to make friends, mm -hmm. uh, do you ever uh, notice people's body language? Is that something that you notice? No, I think I'm very oblivious to all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Because really? like, if someone is like being petty, uh -huh. I won't catch it, you know? They'll mm -hmm. be like, like, oh, I like your shirt, <laughs> wow. And I'm like, thank you, you know, uh, I don't notice it. That's so <laughs> true, I guess I can get like you're uh -huh. um, not naive, but uh -huh. just like, I don't know, maybe naive a little bit? I think like, I'm naive, naive. Yeah. yeah. But it's harder to pick up like sarcasm. Yeah. <laughs> Would you ever feel like, <clears throat> like when you make new friends, could you pick up people's energy? And by that, I mean like, mm -hmm. do you ever have like, an, uh, you know how like when you're in a situation where you feel like fear basically, um, like say like you're in a car with someone and you all of a sudden like feel like, oh my god, like this is actually like, I feel like something could, something like bad could happen. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like that like little, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like but meeting people, like where it's like, I kind of feel like I don't want to trust them. Like maybe uh, like with a guy more or something. Yeah, I, I was I was gonna say like okay. Tinder, Tinder. Okay, okay. I not on Tinder, but yeah, like yeah. when I used to be, mm -hmm. um, like yeah, I would go on some dates and I'm like, right, dude, that's the situation. scariest part. Like I feel like just because also I feel like when you meet someone in real life, you kind of get the vibe immediately. But outside of that, like guys can kind of play it however they want. Yeah, especially because like. Well, in text, it's kind of harder to read someone, yeah. you know, because they're just like typing away. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's like word choice and things like mm -hmm. that, um, capitalization, exclamation points, whatever. But other than that, you can't tell what tone they're taking, and you can't tell like what they're, you know, you know how they're yeah. kind of um, how they hold themselves and stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? And not that like these people are like psychopaths or anything, <laughs> but like just in general, like even like psychopaths or people that have, and this is kind of a little bit deeper, but, like mm -hmm. people that have like, so to say like traumas whenever they were being brought up or whatever. Um, I, I don't know if I really want to touch up on that, but like basically like someone that has like a problem, it, you, you can hide it um, maybe like easier, I guess. Mm -hmm. because uh because they understand like social norms mm -hmm. yeah. so like for them like even if they were kind of creepy mm -hmm. again like through text that's like a social norm and they know kind of like what's appropriate and if they don't know what's appropriate like for something like that they can literally google it yeah yeah like i do that all the time actually like if someone like that i don't want to speak to like sends me like a message mm -hmm. and i don't want to be rude or something i do speak to but i don't want to be rude to like i'll literally like how do you tell someone, how do you reply to someone that says I miss you, but without saying I miss you? <laughs> I, like, I'm so awkward. But yeah. Like, no, I, I kind of do the two. Well, with me, it's more like if someone is kind of like asking something that's like more profound that I don't understand, like mm -hmm. how to console someone, how to help oh, someone yeah. who's mourning, how that. to, you know. I'm just kind of like, oh man, I'm like, hey, you know, if you want anyone to talk to, I'm here for you. And then they do it, and I'm like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> like, do they normally text you, or like, obviously you can't do that face to face? Yeah, well, I would rather do it face to face because I feel like it's kind of easier to get oh. there emotionally with mm -hmm. someone when it's face to face. But through text, it's like, fuck. Yeah, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. You know, the only, I feel like the most that I could do is just like, well, like. Obviously, I googled some of these things, yeah. but like, you kind of like ask them about how they're they're doing and stuff. You know, you, you want them to like express themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that that's easier done in person. You mm -hmm. know, even yeah. though the, I think that the only benefit to that is that you get a moment to think about it. You know, because mm -hmm. I feel like if you're yeah. face to face with someone, you might see something wrong. You might see something wrong, and you don't really have that guidance or that time to really think about mm -hmm. it you know do you do you feel that feeling a lot with girls or with guys or i mean obviously both uh -huh. but like if you really think about it like do you feel like with a girl it's like easier to comfort or a guy uh-huh um i think it's easier to comfort girls same because <laughs> like guys sometimes will tell you like the heaviest shit and you're like holy fuck bro you need <laughs> like, I don't even want to help you. Like, yeah, exactly. No, yeah, I, I feel like, like, kind of uh, surprised, you know, because uh, yeah. some girls, you know, I'll, I'll talk to them and they're kind of like, uh, 
oh, you know, I was talking to my mom about this and I'm having trouble with it. And then like, you know, we're like, oh, okay, well, let's talk about that. You know, yeah. where like a guy, you'll tell him like, hey, like you seem really upset right now. Is something going on? And they're like, yeah, well, you know, I'm upset about this one thing. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of get into it like, oh, okay. Um, what about this thing is upsetting you? And then it goes into like yeah. the whole life. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> you've been bottling it. Because I yeah. feel like a lot of the times guys bottle things up, you know, more often than mm -hmm. not. And I think that that's, you know, um, it's, it's. I feel like they don't really have the opportunity, the same opportunity that women have yeah. to like express themselves mm -hmm. in the same way. Yeah, definitely because of how they've been conditioned. Mm -hmm. But like, I feel like, and I mean, we don't also have to go into this realm, but like that's kind of why, like I've been learning a lot about how like a lot of the things that, like basically like how you're raised really affects you in the long run and it doesn't have to be like where this tragic thing happened mm -hmm. but like even with like little things yeah like little things like if you're like and i kind of like we're talking about this briefly but like you know how like kids are specifically boys but like just in general like let's talk about a boy right like mm -hmm. as an example like when they're kids and their mom is like Shh, like stop like every night like either half of the time they pay attention to them and half of the other time like they're just kind of like like shut shut up stop crying right like because mm -hmm. guys like reach a certain age and that's when they have to be a man right whatever that means mm -hmm. um but um what that teaches kids is okay so to be close to the people that i love i have to hold back my feelings mm -hmm. so like over time when they get in a relationship that's why they become emotionally unavailable because mm -hmm. um when they think of like being vulnerable they think of you know not being safe Mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. which is so fucking sad you know what I mean it's like that really affects your child and like and, and that's just like an example like there's other yeah. things that could um and I definitely feel like like when it comes to parenting parenting is so hard you yeah know? exactly we like to think of like oh you know parents have the answers for everything parents are yeah. our guides when we're young you know um but a lot of the times they're still trying to you, you know, they're still people, they're still yeah, human. They're still so like, I do feel like a lot of the times parents, and maybe like not even intentionally, they instill certain behaviors on their kids. Mm -hmm. And well, for a lot of guys, I feel like culturally or like socially, it's been difficult to give them like uh, an outlet mm -hmm. to talk about things, you mm -hmm. know? And a lot of guys feel like they need to bottle things up. Yeah. But I think that Actually, society is kind of turning on that mm -hmm. and being more open mm -hmm. to like um, men and the different emotions that mm -hmm. they feel, you know, mm -hmm. being more accepting of that. Yeah, that's true. I do feel mm -hmm. like but even within like, like if you ask a guy specifically, like they probably wouldn't. I mean, it's good that it's becoming something that um, is talked about a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like even having a conversation with a guy, like at first, like they don't want to share. I don't know. You know, it, they're not fully there yet. And like not in a bad way. I'm just saying like mm -hmm. the culture difference is definitely interesting. Mm -hmm. But um, I kind of want to get back to like anxiety. So um, do you ever feel anxious? Like, okay, in certain social situations, if someone is particularly intimidating, mm -hmm. I do, you know, but honestly, mm -hmm. most of the, most of the time, I just kind of don't really think about it too much, you know what I mean? I, I just kind of feel like, you know, they are people just like me, I kind of want to relate to them, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I think that that's um, kind of like the foundation of like, why it, it, I've learned to be able to be friends mm -hmm. with people. You know, because um, when I was in high school, it was very competitive mm -hmm. and very clicky. Um, probably, like, a bigger high school would have been, like, the same thing or maybe, like, a little different. Mm -hmm. who, who knows if it would have been better or worse. But when you start off a conversation with a person trying to relate to them mm -hmm. rather than trying to set yourself apart from them, mm -hmm. it actually allows people to make connections easier, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So... Um, I think that that could kind of help alleviate people's anxiety mm -hmm. if they think like if you're there and then there's another person there 
any of you think this person's probably anxious like I am mm -hmm. I'm really anxious right now that I'll say something wrong and they probably feel that too mm -hmm. so that's probably something that you could use to like lean into you know mm -hmm. you can give them a sense of comfort you can give them a sense of like you know you, you don't have to it's, uh, you don't have to behave a certain way around me mm -hmm. I think that that helps a lot mm -hmm. do you have you ever had um, you know how like I'm pretty sure you know like people have like anxiety attacks or mm -hmm. panic attacks i'm sorry mm -hmm. have you ever experienced something like that um yeah really yeah. um i don't i don't think that like i i have like a social anxiety um mm -hmm. maybe to, to a certain extent i do but like um it, i i had a uh, <laughs> it's gonna be too personal i think i think yeah that, that's kind of personal but um like there was a, a certain situation where like um you know a guy mm -hmm. was kind of like lashing out towards one of my friends mm -hmm. and she was reacting like kind of aggressively mm -hmm. like you know I, I appreciate that she was standing up for me and standing up for herself mm -hmm. But that situation, at that point, I felt really anxious, mm. and I vomited. And we were, um, we were at the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. We were at um, it was like a Friday. Really? Yeah. Okay, and so it's back in our hometown. That's back in our hometown. It's like a really cute coffee shop. It's yeah. Really, yeah, it's a really cool place. But that was where it happened, and I had no idea what to do. I just got up. That's I walked so out. Crazy. Literally, like where people go toward to, to walk to cross the street, mm -hmm. I vomited right there. And that was my experience with a, with a panic attack. Mm -hmm. um, I was like in a really scary, mm -hmm. well, what I think was like a socially like a scary situation, and things were getting kind of like to a point where I felt like I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. So yeah. I just literally got up, I walked out, and I vomited. You know what? <laughs> That's funny, because on... Okay, so if you watch the video, I keep referencing it, but whatever. It was really interesting. The therapist was talking about, like, when you experience anxiety, that fear... That fear is not that it's not real, because it, it exists in your mind or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's not technically, like, a bear coming after you or whatever, but, like, she was referencing how, like, in textbooks, they'll always talk about, like, okay, so, like in the old times or whatever <laughs> um when you're like when there's a bear in front of you and it's you and you're trying to um when you have that anxiety of like a fear that's mm, rational i guess so to speak um you technically you can't your eyes can't really cry mm -hmm. because that will impair your vision so you're not you, you can't really cry but it was also saying that you, your digestion, your digestive system stops working mm -hmm. um, because that would also like that would be a lot of energy on your digestive system, and you're trying to use that energy to get the fuck out of there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and that's exactly what I did in that situation. I didn't think about it and cry yeah. and dwell on it. I just got up and vomited. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know why I was so vomiting, but like literally, that's it. It was kind of like a, a little bit of like an out of body experience, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, funny. um, I kind of, it was just like I instinctively got up, went outside, mm -hmm. you know. And that was your friend that you were with, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. She's okay. a good friend, though. <laughs> That's, was she okay? Yeah, she was fine. okay. I was like, <laughs> did she die? I'm just kidding. That, that made her mad, though, I think. Yeah, that, like, um, certain situations. Yeah, yeah me sense. reacting like that, because, I mean, she, she does have a lot of anxiety, which, to oh, me, to me I would feel she like... Well, she's very extroverted, you know what I mean? So, it, it kind of, to me, it would feel like, um, it would seem weird that, you know, she has a lot of social anxiety, mm -hmm. and she was the one who was kind of, like, standing up for us, mm -hmm. and I you know, feel fine talking to people. Mm -hmm. And you were the And one I was the one who had like, like so <laughs> funny because it's like she's the fight and you're the flight. Yeah, exactly. But like, um, yeah, I think that in that situation, she just kind of felt like she was, she was in control. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like in other situations, she does still feel a lot of like that anxiety, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess it, you know, it, it's kind of like a uh, closure for us because in that situation, I knew what she yeah. feels like probably most of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to talk about 
Um, something, this is like a, I guess like an abstract idea and I wrote it in here, but I don't know how I was going to introduce it, but I'm just going to bring it up. <laughs> so, um, do you ever feel like attachment to, well, basically I went at one point last this year, <laughs> I was reflecting <laughs> back into like the fact that like, I think I'm pretty social. Mm -hmm. um maybe it wasn't like that you know when we used to live together not that i wasn't social at all but mm -hmm. um but like over the time you know you grow up whatever but um what i was trying to say is i remember like at work um my sister works with me and like she would be introducing me as like shy to other people oh yeah same mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um and like, and then other people, I would speak to them and they just thought like, oh, dude, you're like really like confident and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and that's just like one aspect of my life, but it was just like an observation that I almost like made, like an experiment, so to speak. Um, and the thing is, it's like, I really just like realized that like all of those are just like a reflection of like how they view me. Mm -hmm. It's not really me at my core. Um, but for a while... I was like, yeah, I'm shy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like attachments to how other people, or have you even questioned that before? Like, how would like your sister introduce you and you'd be like, yeah, like, cause that's what they've always called you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that's really interesting. I would have never thought of you as a shy person. Right? <laughs> that also like taps into uh -huh. the whole thing of like, okay, well then you, that's just how you view me. Like I can go to the mm -hmm. coffee shop, like a coffee shop and someone's like, Mm -hmm. Oh, like, she's really, like, she's really you, mysterious. Or you whatever. are pretty quiet. I remember one time, like, you were at lunch. I was at lunch, and I didn't even notice that you were at lunch because you were so quiet, mm -hmm. you know? You just kind of, like, you know, we're doing your own thing. Yeah. And I was over here, and I'm like, there you are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do I ever feel attachment to a label? Yeah, now? like, do you ever feel like, in, mm -hmm. if you think a little bit, like, has like let's just say like your family ever mm -hmm. called you something and you never really questioned it mm -hmm. like with i guess like one thing that they would always call like they said my sister is like she's like a worrier mm -hmm. and like I, I totally see that but also if you just like kind of label someone that like oh she's just this like that's just how she's always been mm -hmm. that kind of almost like limits you mm -hmm. and doesn't lead you to kind of like I guess I go outside the boundaries or the boundaries that you've created in your head because of external, you know, I want to say validation, but you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. is there something that you feel like, huh, am I really like this? Um, you know, I, I'm actually not too sure. Um, Has anyone ever been like, oh, Melanie's just like that? Like, uh -huh. like okay, like you're quirky. Well, here, here's one thing. Okay, go. And this has bothered me forever. What? Okay, I'm one so time, scared. one time you told me uh -huh. that I reminded you of Katy Perry. You okay. said that we had a lot in common, and I'm okay, like, how? Where is that coming from? I'm yeah. nothing like her. That, that <laughs> I don't think is true. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I guess I wouldn't really be like a label. Mm -hmm. But um, but I mean, have you ever met someone that's called you shy? Yes, but. Um, it, it was actually at church. Really? Oh, same. Because of I that mean, experience? Like, everyone's a click and you're just Everyone like knows everyone else, you know? They all know each other. And, um, we would go, I, I would go actually pretty often to church. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I did some theater with them. Um, I would go, like, every Wednesday, every Sunday. Like, very frequently, you know? Mm -hmm. But... I didn't know these people. They they were seeing each other like Monday to Sunday, like mm -hmm. literally every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were all hanging out with each other. Yeah, literally all of the time. Mm -hmm. And I would only see them like three times a week, which is still a lot. But they knew each other at a level that I didn't know them at. Yeah. So I always felt like the odd one out. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I mean, people would try to help me to like fit in and stuff. And they would say like, oh, she's shy. And I'm like, I'm not shy. I just don't know yeah <laughs> like you're just all you all know each other so well and i don't i 
I've yeah. seen y'all for years, like three times a week, but like same. That's yeah. how it was also for CCE. Like it was just like it was just like a weird thing. Mm -hmm. But that's also like for me, I just kind of thought it was oh okay, like it was true. Like I never really questioned it. Mm -hmm. And then when I started getting the label, I was being confident by some people, and then it became more. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh yeah, like maybe I kind of am or whatever. But like really, it's just like it's really none of those. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because, like, like a human, like, it makes, a, or as a human, it makes sense that you're multidimensional, you know what I mean? And in certain yeah. situations, you're not going to want to, like, d talk to everyone there and be like, oh my god, what's your name and what do you do and blah, 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 and all yeah. that. And, like, relate to a girl to try to be friends with her or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that that's a really interesting point to make because you have this one word and you're applying it to like a person. Mm -hmm. So like, for, for example, I think I, I will use they say, right? Mm -hmm. There was a period in time when we went to high school together and every single person thought, oh, she's really shy. Mm -hmm. She's really, really shy, you know? And to me, I see her the way that she behaved at school and it was shy. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of any other way to describe it, right? But then I think about all of the times that she's acted goofy and anything. Yeah. You know, she used to do that little <laughs> dance <laughs> <chase on her. laughs> And so I think of all of the times that she's been so extroverted and so funny and like really like out there mm -hmm. when she's with us, when she feels comfortable. And I don't see that shyness yeah. in those situations, you know? So I, I feel like the shy the aspect of being shyness is it's only in a specific situation mm -hmm. you know what i mean i was i only seemed shy when i would go to those yeah um, like religious classes like, yeah classes that and social setting. literally any other place people would tell, tell you that i'm completely the opposite i'm extroverted mm -hmm. i'm loud mm -hmm. i talk a lot you know mm -hmm. so it's really just one aspect of a person, just the aspect that you see. Yeah. And there's so much more to people. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, so, like, the next thing that I had on the list, I remember, actually, is because recently, um, something I've been noticing, it's like, I like Instagram, but I've noticed I haven't really been on it that much for several, mm -hmm. like, reasons or whatever, but it's like, it should be fun. It should be, like, an art form. Mm -hmm. Um but whatever anyway what i'm trying to get at i remember some of the pictures or i know some of the pictures that i posted on my social media mm -hmm. are a little like <laughs> scandalous so to speak mm -hmm. right and and like not all of them are but and this is kind of like taking a weird turn but there was a guy in like m work that he followed me and I remember like a different guy was just like, hey, is this you? And I was like, I saw it. Like, it was like months after I posted that. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's me. Like, what the fuck? Why do you, like, you didn't even follow me on there. Like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. He was just like, oh, it's cause like a guy was showing it to everyone at work. And like, to me, was it a bikini picture? It wasn't a bikini picture, mm -hmm. but it was kind of like, like me in the dressing room taking a picture. Oh. And like, Part of me is kind of like when people post like random stuff, I'm like, well, if you didn't want anyone to see it, then don't post it. But that's mm -hmm. also like, whatever, fuck it. It's like, you can do whatever you want. But also, I guess like in high school, probably I would have been like shy about it or something. I like the attention. Like I was just kind of like, yeah, and <laughs> there's mm -hmm. plenty more where that came from. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, I don't care. Um, but I feel like even in like life or whatever, but like s sometimes especially like through men's mind, but like even just like regular people or whatever, like it's hard to view someone as multidimensional, mm -hmm. you know, like even on social media, like say like there's a girl that, that looks like really aesthetic in every picture. She's just like, mm -hmm. and then you see her in real life and she's like always smiling. Like she doesn't, like she's not posing like super cute or whatever all the time and really like indie or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like she'll be like, you know, laughing and maybe she'll be cussing and it's just mm -hmm. like, I don't remember like this the MySpace days is so stupid. <laughs> but like I would post like emo ass quotes that were super fucking vague and I never mm -hmm. smiled in my pictures and I remember thinking like fuck I always smile in real life. Like <laughs> do people like do they does anyone question like does and I think that's like you're getting in your head, right? Yeah. But it's just like it's weird, you know? Like the the two dimension I mean the the one dimension 
that you see in a person, if that makes any fucking sense. I have that kind of fear. Not like a legit fear, but it's just like, it's frustrating to know that like, this is like a different topic, but like guys will see you as either a trophy or a thought. Mm -hmm. Like a, like an idea thought or like a thought? <laughs> <laughs> a thoughty. A thoughty. Oh. Yeah, I think that that's kind of like, that's, that's a pretty toxic mentality for them mm -hmm. to have. Because even if you are, I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. so objectifying to think of it this way. But even if you are a trophy, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes you want to feel a little sexy. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, too. You want to feel a little funny. <laughs> <laughs> a little funny. Yeah, and, and that's another mm -hmm. thing, too. It's just like the whole thing of like women be, having more dimension than that, you mm -hmm. know? I don't know. That's just something that I think about. It's like... Every now and then I'll be like, have I smiled enough in my Instagram pictures? Because if someone sees me in real life and they see me like smiling, they're probably not going to think I'm the same like mysterious person that I want to like. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's just like, what the fuck am I doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, anyway. So, uh -huh. do you mind opening your phone? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, that's another topic. I guess like that's anxiety in a different way. But yeah. anyway. So, I have this other question. I did listen to this one girl on social media. Uh -huh. And she's super interesting, really deep. Her name is uh, Jade Electra, right? And something that she like, at, like she's so fucking deep, but you know, whatever, anyway, another time. Mm -hmm. She has asked like, if you were to have died today, like what um, dreams and goals would die with you? That's a really good yeah, question. Yeah, actually, that's a, such a good question, actually. That makes me want to cry. <laughs> Do you guys know? teacher and like mm -hmm. she'll literally be like asking shit like that mm -hmm. in like while you're doing yoga so like you're fucking breaking down like there's this other one and I, I like I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right she's like sometimes when I really want to get and I was listening to this podcast she's like when I really want to get people um like to cry or whatever um I really um I will start off the class by being like okay like so today you're gonna just um think just close your eyes and think of like make a list of all the people that you love, like the people that you like care for the most or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if someone weird comes into your mind, just allow it, like maybe like an ex or like something weird, right? Mm -hmm. Like an old friend, like maybe someone, whatever. Something weird, just like in a strange relationship. Thing. Right, like mm -hmm. anything, just like write it down and like let it just like sit, right? You're doing the yoga move, whatever. And then, um, you know, you get further in and then she's just like, I hope I don't butcher the saying, mm -hmm. but she's just like, and if I asked you to list all the people that you loved, how long would it list, would it take for you to list yourself? And I was like, holy oh. fuck. <laughs> Dude. Plot twist. <laughs> Bro. I just got chills. I'm shook. Because <laughs> it's like, it's true. Like, I don't think I'm like rude to myself or anything, but like, mm -hmm. I wasn't on that list. No, yeah. Like, so many people think about love very like outwardly you know yeah. I, I feel like to That's an extent true. it takes a, it takes a moment to really consider even yourself just because you know looking out into the world there's like so many people that you think that you love and you know whenever it comes to that i feel like a lot of people kind of they're an afterthought you know what mm -hmm. i mean um you know there's this really interesting metaphor mm -hmm. which is like a table mm -hmm. right so you have a table and that's you mm -hmm. and then well, well it's, it's your life right it's your life and then you have these little legs that are support right mm -hmm. and so you have your um your family you have your friends mm -hmm. you have like a significant other boyfriend girlfriend whatever it is um and then you have your surrounding environment right and they say that if you only get your love from these four it's gonna be unbalanced. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get more love from your girlfriend. You're gonna pay less attention to your friends, less mm -hmm. attention to your family. If you have like some issues going on with your family and you're not getting enough love there, if you rely too much on your surrounding environment, mm -hmm. you know, other people's approval, mm -hmm. you're not gonna, you're not gonna have balance. Mm -hmm. But if you have one pillar, mm -hmm. and that's your self love you're gonna have more stability mm -hmm. because and i think that that's like a really really good metaphor for that because i kind of feel like a lot of people think you know the sources of love for you have to come from other people mm -hmm. and so a lot of people do these things that they seek out approval mm -hmm. from 
boyfriends, girlfriends, from family, from friends, from other, from your community, you know, when you could have a lot of stability if you gave that love to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, it's crazy. But, um, what, what do you, what hopes and dreams would, um, would die with you if you die today? That is so sad. <laughs> Dude, I know. But like, think of like you purely. Like, what would you? Uh -huh. Shoot, dude. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to get really into like just being creative. I've, I've really been looking for a creative outlook right now, you know, in and, and, like creative writing and in cosplay. When I was like in middle school, I was so into cosplay mm -hmm. and you know, I did, I cosplayed every single Death Note character. And now that I have more money and more resources and more time to put forth to that, I really want to devote myself to it, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it just kind of, it, it's been taking me some time to really get to where I was back then, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that question really reminds me of the movie Fight Club. There's a scene in that movie where um, Brad Pitt goes up to a, uh, a clerk at a gas shop, mm -hmm. gas station, mm -hmm. like a corner store type of place, and he points a gun at him, and he tells him, like, he asks him for his name, he asks him to, like, basically introduce himself, right? And he's like, when you were young, what did you always want to be? And he said, like, a veterinarian. He always wanted to be a veterinarian. And so he tells him, like, if tomorrow you're not on your way to become a veterinarian, I'm going to find you and I'm going to kill you. <sighs> And then he left, and um, Edward Norton's character is kind of like, what was that about? Why, why, why would you do that? And he's like, tomorrow he's going to wake up, and he's going to breathe easier, and he's going to be happy, and he's going to appreciate whoever he has around here. His food is going to taste better. His water is going to taste better. Everything is going to be better from this day on. And that's now, so crazy. And that's, I yeah. can't see that movie again. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good movie. But um, yeah, that's really like kind of an inspirational question yeah exactly because i feel like so many people have that fear of death and they have you know so many ideas of like what could have been you know mm -hmm. and when you're thinking about like your dreams your aspirations it's it feels so distant mm -hmm. but when you put that you put that question like that if you were to die today what dreams would die with you it really makes you say you know what screw like needing all of these things i don't need all of these things to accomplish what i want i really need to like live in the moment act now and do what i need mm -hmm. to get to where you know i want to be mm -hmm. yeah i think it's hard sometimes to like no it's easy to i guess just do what everyone else is doing which and i keep referencing that but like um in the sense of like you feel mm, like you just go on and do things that you don't really want to do because it's safe mm -hmm. and that's so sad but like there's there's like fear and like doubt embedded into you mm -hmm. right i feel like even for me like this i feel like is such a passion project and i love like connecting with people it's like my fucking favorite thing to do mm -hmm. but it's like I don't really know if a job like how how do you do that like like a legit one you know what i mean mm -hmm. like not that this isn't or not that this can't be but like you know what i mean it's like i don't know you feel like that would be the dream that would die with you yeah mm -hmm. or like finding a job that would be you know what i mean mm -hmm. but i also have like a lot of dreams and goals you know like creativity mm -hmm. is like another one for sure for me mm -hmm. um and I really fucking love fashion mm -hmm. too, but also it's like I like connecting mm -hmm. and I like cooking. It's like, what do you mix with all of that? You know what I mean? And also, I really like to uh -huh. talk to like women and like, I feel like, I don't know, like, I just been listening to so many podcasts, like, like that basically. Like, they're so inspirational. I'm just like, holy fuck. Uh -huh. And like, not all of it is like, okay, well, if you die tomorrow, like, no, no, no. Uh -huh. It's like things that are just like, you, it, it helps you question, like, Mm -hmm. Like, okay, is this something that you are doing because you genuinely want to? Or is this just become, like, like, um, like are you doing this because, you know, you've created these limits? And most of the limits that you can, like, you create for yourself, like, doubt, for example, it's like, 
self-created limits like how did these other people get to where they are you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i don't know it's like these layers of like I'm like i could literally go off but like <laughs> you know what i mean i don't know it's crazy it's fucking crazy okay but mm -hmm. let me see um okay so another thing i think we're gonna end it here and hopefully the it's like still recording <laughs> well, take it, but whatever. like this is fine yeah but um anyway so in that video, it was talking about how people will like normally have, um, okay, so I'm trying to introduce this and maybe hopefully I get it wrong. I hope I don't get it wrong, but, um, she was talking about how people will sometimes go to therapy and, um, I think it was something about like how people get, like maybe it's like they have doubt, right? It's like mm -hmm. part of me wants to do this, right? And the other part of me is scared to because blah 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 I don't know what and the t therapist was like and it's us as humans we understand like parts so what she will do is she'll start talking to that part of you she's like mm -hmm. okay like let's first then let's talk about the part of you that does let's talk to the part that does want to do that mm -hmm. isn't that cool I, I don't know I thought that was so fucking interesting where it's just like yeah when you feel that that sort of split you yeah, know? and it's just like, and a lot of the fear or whatever has been embed embedded to you. She's also talking about like her practice or whatever. She's mm -hmm. like, it's been embedded into you since you were like eight years old, like that doubt or a specific whatever. And she's just like, so now let's talk to that part of you, even uh -huh. like that eight year old you. Yeah. And like, you know, I don't know. It's so fucking interesting. Like, even like thinking about like, okay, what did you really want to do as a kid? Right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, like that guy, like a veterinarian or whatever. It's like, let's talk to that eight year old kid and see like, like, like let's explain. And maybe at eight years old, you were at that time, you really wanted to be that. Your mom told you, no, you can't be that. That's a lot of schooling. That's a lot of blah, blah, blah. I don't know what. Mm -hmm. So like, let's talk this to that. a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Like, let's, um, let's talk to that like, eight year old and like, let's, um, Hug him for like feeling lost and not being able to accomplish their dream. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so fucking interesting, and I like that also ties into like the dimensional parts of you. Mm -hmm. That's like okay, me as in like me posting a body picture and then questioning mm -hmm. like, am I body? You know, not that I actually did that because <laughs> I like the attention. But like, that's, uh -huh. there are people that are like, well, am I kind of slutty? Mm -hmm. And it's just like let's talk to that part of you. That mm -hmm. wants to have fun, mm -hmm. but also that 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 um wifey aspect of you that likes being in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and that is also questioning like, am I doing this because I want to, or is it just because like societal you know norms or whatever or, you know, whatever? Because your food tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's just like let's talk to those parts and like mm -hmm. try to understand them and make sure that it is something that you do want to do because you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, even when those guys, I, I don't know if they were trying to, like, shame me or whatever, mm -hmm. but I was, like, I was so confident, and, mm -hmm. and I think, too, it's because I've heard other people on social media discuss, like, this specific topic, where it's just, like, yeah, sometimes I'm going to be a little thought. Sometimes I'm going to be a little, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I guess I think that's something that was imp that I'm glad that I heard of before. And when those guys, like, were trying to talk about it like oh my god why were you posting blah 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 like i can't believe you wouldn't it's like i was literally just like yeah and mm -hmm. <laughs> like paris hilton and <laughs> <laughs> yeah <I'm> so hot <laughs> yeah, I'm but that's so that's that's good for you you know mm -hmm. that you are able to kind of like look at that situation like yeah i like to have fun and i have a good body and i like the way that I looked in this outfit, mm -hmm. you know, I think that that's very, um, it's very good that you have that mm -hmm. sort of mentality to you. And I think that it's kind of, um, it kind of sucks, you know, when a person feels like they can't enjoy themselves mm -hmm. because of other people, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And also because maybe like no one's shaming you, mm -hmm. but again, back to that thing, it's like people are calling you this certain thing so you just think that you are that way mm -hmm. but it's like i think that's another thing too it's like people are always going to think of you a certain way because it's easier to do that you know like we've just been trained not trained to but like we do that for survival kind of like you will kind of judge people for survival like it's you know it makes sense like oh that person's untrustworthy untrust that that person's well a lot in a way but again that's just like what other people think of you 
Mm -hmm. And it'll always just be like however they think of you. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's that sort of like like an impression that you, that um, that they give that you give. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, you can try to change that, but it's like some people will just want to see you as like that one dimensional whatever. But like, also then you'll know who is like not cool, but like who you do want to interact with that understand that like you're more than just mm -hmm. you know you're more than just that one aspect. Yeah, you know, because mm -hmm. um, there's a, a an expression I guess. That is like there exists a million of you. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. the real you, and then there's the you that exists in everyone else's head. Mm -hmm. You know exactly. And I also think that that it also kind of goes into um, your own head. You know, yeah. you have your own idea of you, mm -hmm. and it, it's probably different than then, yeah. what you actually are. You know, I feel like a lot of people have a lot of self doubt, mm -hmm. and and they say to themselves a lot of like negative things that are not accurate mm. especially like That's true. people who are dealing with like depression or anxiety you know they feel like like i'm worthless mm -hmm. when you know that's obviously not true mm -hmm. or they'll feel like i'm really stupid you know but to someone else that you know maybe they help them learn something mm -hmm. they feel like well i didn't think that you were stupid because mm -hmm. you have shown me you taught me yeah, yeah that's true i think also it's like if someone i feel like it's hard to for me even like when someone gives me a compliment like oh my god like you really know how to do that what the hell i'm just like yeah it's whatever <laughs> you know, it's like i think a new thing for me is actually like taking the compliments and be like yeah i know mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah like even sometimes like this could fall into the thing of like when guys are like oh my like they're probably like flirting with you or whatever but they're mm -hmm. like oh my god you're so beautiful or whatever and like they're probably full of shit but it's like <laughs> i know like they can probably like do that you're an asshole but like mm -hmm. some of these things are true like and, like mm -hmm. if you believe it to be true then it is true mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah um but also if you believe that like oh shit like i'm actually kind of stupid and i'm only like worth mm -hmm. this like shitty job or you know like i'm actually not you know, like, you, you'll start to believe those. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know. And that's kind of shitty. Like, you start doubting yourself, too. Yeah, it kind of, like, gives you that negative reinforcement. Mm -hmm. That, I feel like, well, I think that it's, a, it's like, a fact. Like, so psychologically, it's easier for people to accept negative, mm -hmm. negative feedback, you know? So, like, if someone tells you, like, wow, you don't know how to do this, you're really dumb. Mm -hmm. It really sticks with you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not knowing how to do this one specific thing, it lingers in your head and then that becomes kind of like a, like a self-fulfilling pro prophecy, yeah, you know? Exactly. You think, oh, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And because someone else reinforced that, you really believe that you mm -hmm. can't. And then you, you will just perform with doubt. Mm -hmm. And then that causes for you to not even be able to mm -hmm. excel at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the mind's like super fucking interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I think we're good. I think I'm done. I don't have. <laughs> I think we're 50 minutes long. So we're 50 we're minutes done. in? Oh my god! Yeah, okay, so um, I hope I can upload everything <laughs> safely so we can have maybe another podcast episode uh -huh. or something or fake podcast episode. This is really fun. This is really Right? It was such a good. Okay, well, anyway, I'm. I'm trying to make more friends uh -huh. so that I could be like, I mean, I already have some friends though, but like, I'm trying to make more friends so I could be like, okay, like, let's come and talk about your life to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten this far, thank you so, so much. Is there anything that you would like to say? Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I'm going to link Melanie's uh, YouTube uh, below and um, you should check it out and we will see you guys later. Thank you.